Hey guys, Jimmy here. Welcome back to Fish the Moment. Today in our underwater bait testing series, we're gonna bring you footage of the Mega Bass Sleeper Gill, the Mega Bass Dark Sleeper, and the Mega Bass Spark Shad. Now let's get into it. Today, in this video, you're gonna to get to see these three baits perform in underwater footage in a pool and in a lake. We will go over how each of these baits do when they are swimming, dragging, and hopping. I also did test of how these baits went through cover. We will go over how they went through rock, timber, hydrilla, and brush piles. We will then go over the hook gap size of each bait. Then at last, I'll go over how each bait does casting. Let's start this off with the sleeper gill. It currently comes in a three quarter ounce size. The sleeper gill comes in a package with one bait that costs $9.99. Today, to see a swim bait that's $10, it's pretty cheap considering how much I'm seeing the swim baits go for today. I've not yet had a chance to use a sleeper gill until testing it for this video. The bait as you see is replicating a smaller brim. For me and the bodies of waters that I fish, I dial in on the brim patterns. So I'm really excited about this bait and can't wait to see it in action. Let's first watch and see how it performs while swimming. The first thing I notice is the action of the tail. The tail is sensitive enough that it gives a great action when reeling at any speed. The body of the sleeper gill has a tight action to it as well. The action is described as a body roll by Mega Bass. I think the action and look of the bait is close as you can get to a real brim. This bait is not only designed to be swam, but designed to be able to drag along the bottom. This bait has a low center of gravity designed with the pectoral fin balance that helps it have the bottom contact swimming ability. I was impressed with how this bait went through the rock structure. The bait would slide in between the rock's crevices and the tail would still be giving its kicking action. When I first saw this bait, I was thinking about throwing around docks or shallow brim beds, but after going through the test, the sleeper gill can be thrown in a lot of different situations. When this bait hops, the tail is still giving its kicking action. The body would dart to the right or left, but it would be tight. I'm going to try to fish these baits offshore and will go in between the dragging and the hopping. I think when bass are more tight to the bottom than dragging, slowly swimming it will be the way to fish it. But when they're suspended two to four feet from the bottom, then hopping it will be the way to go. After seeing this action, I would not think why this bait would not get them fish suspended to bite. Now let's go to the Dark Sleeper. This is the original bottom structured swim bait created by Mega Bass. It comes in a variety of sizes. The one we did our test in this video for is a 3 quarter ounce 3.8 inch size. It costs $7.99. They also have another 3 quarter ounce size that's 3 inches that is $6.99. This bait looks like a goby and I never did purchase one of these because I do not fish lakes with big smallmouth populations. This bait was not designed to be a swim oriented bait, but as you watch this footage, it does give great action. It tells a, gives a hard kicking action when rolling slow or fast. With the design of the weight of the head, the head of this bait gives a tight movement while swimming it.
The spade was designed to be dragged or swam along the bottom. When watching this footage and performing the test, I was glad that we went out and got footage of the spade in the lake. The pool shots did not do justice as the lake shots did a good job of showing us how the bait goes through the rocks. The dark sleeper has a sneaky approach as it gets through the cracks of the rocks really well. The tail still gives a big kick when reeling at slower speed. I like the design waiting system of this bait that it has as it goes through the rocks and is still able to give the action. After seeing this footage and going through the test, I'm ready to give this lure a shot and catch largemouth with it down in my neck of the woods. Watching the footage of this bait hopping, the dark sleeper's tail still gives a distinct kicking action going up and then back down. When hopping this bait, it does not go far from its original spot. This is because of the weighting system in the head of the bait. Recently, Fish the Moment team member Randy Blockett made a video explaining how this lure has caught him more fish this summer than any other bait. He said hopping this lure has been his go-to to catch fish. After performing these tests and watching the footage, I believe I've missed out on using the Dark Sleeper in the past couple of years. The last swim bait we will be testing is the Mega Bass Spark Shad. We're pairing the Spark Shad with the Epix Baits 1 half ounce underspin. This combo has here has caught me a lot of fish. For the test, I chose the half ounce in the 4 inch bait to get as close as to the 3 quarter ounce size since the other two baits weighed that much. The underspin is unique as it has a wire brush guard that's similar to the Fish the Moment Offshore Jig. The Spark Shad comes in packs of 5 for $8.99 and the Epic Underspin comes in a pack of 1 for $7.99. During the footage of watching this bait swimming, I noticed the tail would almost do a whole circle or go 360 degrees. I thought this was interesting because typically swim bait tails go side to side instead of the circular motion as you see. This tail is very sensitive and will give a great action when reeled at slower speeds as well. I've never dragged an underspin on the bottom before as I've always thrown it in timber or around grass. With that, this bait performed well in the test when dragged on rock. Watching the footage, the head of the underspin hits the rock well, then the blade part of the bait deflects right over the rocks. The spark shad still gets its distinct tail action when it is reeled at the slower speeds. I've never hopped an underspin or swim bait combo as well. In situations where I would do something like this, I would throw a hair jig, a spoon, or a little George. After watching the footage, I asked myself why not try this combo out during times I would throw the hair jig or spoon. The swim bait gives its erratic action, then you have the blade of the underspin giving off its vibrations and reflection from the blade as well. Now let's go over how these baits perform going through rocks. Here I am on a long flat point. This is a main lake point where the river channel swings right up next to the point. Out here on the point is a nice rock spot that I tested the baits in. I have side image shots for you to see the rocks. Now these were not giant big old boulders, but good enough rock to get a good understanding of how these baits would perform. For this test, we drag the swim baits and hop the swim baits. For the dragging, I kept the baits on the bottom to get good in the rocks. 
for the retrieve, I would keep my line tight to the lure, have my rod tipped towards the ground, have my tip of my rod towards the lure, and pull it slowly from left to right. I also would swim it on the bottom slowly as well. I would have my rod tip pointed at the lure once it was on the bottom, real slowly, and feel the lure go through the rocks. When hopping the lures, I let the lure go to the bottom, real slowly until I feel the rocks. Then I would keep my rod tip up and hop the lures by moving my rod tip in an upward motion. I was only trying to get the lures to go one to two foot from the bottom, so I was not having to put much effort into my rod action. If I felt the lure get tight in a rock crack, I would reel slow until it would break free. Then I'd hop the lure off the rock. I did a total of 20 casts, 10 of each dragging and hopping for the lures. The sleeper gill got a score 10 out of 10 on both dragging and hopping. Now this score means it did not get hung up once in 10 casts of dragging and 10 casts of hopping. After watching the footage, the Dark Sleeper is one that I'm very excited about using after performing these tests. It got 8 out of 10 on dragging, 9 out of 10 on hopping. In my opinion, the reason the Sleeper Gear performed better in this rock pile than the Dark Sleeper is because of the updated weed guard that covers more of the hook which allows it to be more weedless. The Spark Shad paired with the Epic Underspin got a score 10 out of 10 on dragging and 9 out of 10 on hopping. Now this bait was not intended to be a bottom cover bait, but this still performed well. I think that it did not get hung up as much because of the head design with the underspin. If you keep it moving, that the underspin is there bouncing off of the rocks and keeping the head up to not get stuck in the cracks. The next test I went to a more thicker rock base. We're at Chunk Rock Bank where the main river is next to the bank. I wanted to do a test on a more dense rock just to compare the results. I did the same two retrieves that I did on the rock spot from the previous test, dragging and hopping. I did five of dragging and five of hopping. The sleeper gill got a score of 10 out of 10 on the dragging hopping. I'm impressed with how this lure goes through the rock structures. The dark sleeper got a score of 9 out of 10 on this structure. The one that it did get hung up was when I was dragging it. The epic spark shad combo got an 8 out of 10. It got hung up once dragging and hopping. Our next structure to put these baits through is standing timber. For this test I'm on a point in the middle of a creek where there's a lot of standing timber present. We'll test how these baits swim through the timber. This is a tactic a few years ago that I got on with the Spark Shad Epic Underspin Combo. You can fish this timber a few different ways, but what I did for this test is to throw the bait out and try to keep it in the 10 to 15 foot range. Swimming it slow back to the boat, I keep my rod tip down towards the water and the lure. If I hit a tree or a tree with branches, then I bring the bait over the branch and let the lure drop as if it was a dying bait to entice a fish to bite. The sleeper gill got a score 9 out of 10 going through the standing timber. The dark sleeper got a score of 8 of 10 in the standing timber. The dark sleeper and sleeper gill are not advertised to be standing timber baits, but we wanted to test and see how they would perform, which both performed well. The epic underspin spark shad combo got a score of 10 out of 10. This bait was designed by Scott Suggs, who is one of the best at fishing standing timber. The double wire weed guard helps this lure be snack free and the design of the head makes it where it goes over the timber or the branches well enough to not get hung up and stuck in the cracks. For the grass test we put these baits through hydrilla. I swim the baits on top of the patches of the hydrilla and also let the baits sink down and work them slowly such as dragging and hopping. For this test if they brought back a clump of hydrilla back to the boat I will take that away from the score. The sleeper gill performed a 10 out of 10 on both swimming and then dragging hopping. I know Megabass have advertised this bait to go through grass and this bait did an awesome job of it. The specialized dorsal fin weed guard lived up to the height today for me during the test through the grass. The dark sleeper performed a 10 out of 10 on both tests as well. This lure has a tight action to it which makes it effective in this type of cover. The epic spark shad combo got a score 10 out of 10 in swimming and 9 out of 10 on dragging hopping retrieves. 
on the package of the Epic Underspin is states how to throw this lure in timber or grass. I've never thought about throwing this in the middle of the hydrilla to be honest. I've always thrown the jigs, crankbait, and bladed jigs, but this is a combo to think about if you're fishing grass with a lot of shad bait fish present. For wood, I fished three different brush piles in different depths. For this test, I swam the baits over the brush piles. I let the bait fall to the depth for the top half of the brush pile, then slowly swim it back to the boat. If I hit a branch or the brush pile, I then let the bait fall over the branch into the brush, then slowly reel it out. I'd make sure that the bait would hit the brush pile for it to be counted towards the score. The sleeper gear performed really good on this test. 10 out of 10. I see this bait being fished this way around offshore cover. The lake I was fishing had water visibility of 4 to 6 feet, and if you're fishing a lake that is more muddy or stained, then I would fish your traditional baits in brush piles. The dark sleeper got a score of 8 out of 10. The dark sleeper did come out before the sleeper gill, and you see by the test that Megabast has improved the dorsal fin weed guard from the dark sleeper to the sleeper gill. The epic spark shad combo got a score out of 10 out of 10. I do know of somebody that will throw this bait around brush piles and swim them near the top of the piles. For me, most of the lakes I fish are more stained and do not, do not throw the swim baits over the brush. If any of you are watching this and have success with the swim baits over the brush piles, leave a comment down below. I know Johnny's became really good with the swim baits in the previous years and he has been up in the Ozarks fishing the lakes with really, really clean water. Really quick, if you're enjoying the detailed instruction in this video, then head to our website, fishthemoment.com, and check out our virtual seminars page. Here you'll find seminar recordings from past seminars we've done on a variety of bass fishing topics from seasonal bass movement, electronics, offshore bass fishing, and how weather affects bass. These are three hour seminars with extremely detailed graphics and instruction that we spend hours putting together so that they're extremely clear and impactful. If you want to take your fishing to the next level and enjoy the content on this channel, definitely check out our virtual seminars because I know you'll love the content. Check them out at fishthemoment.com. For the hook gap size, we're going to look at the size of each hook and then also compare the gaps in between the hooks and the baits. The sleeper gill and the spark shad epic combo both have 4 aught size hooks. The dark sleeper is a 3 aught size hook. For the dark sleeper, the lure is designed to expose the hook once the fish bites onto the bait. The bait slides down and the hook comes out. Now comparing this to the sleeper gill, the sleeper gill has the same design but the lure slid down the hook a lot easier than the dark sleeper. Fish the Moment member Randy Blockett explained in his latest video on the dark sleeper how he bends the hook back just a little bit and that helps him have more successful hookup ratios for the dark sleeper. I'm not afraid of the smaller hook on the dark sleeper as I've watched professionals catch the big smallmouth drop shotting with very small hooks. You may think that the wire weed guard would get in the way of the fish catches on the epic underspin but from my experience it does not. Now this has more of a hook gap exposure than the other two lures. There's also less plastic in the way on this bait than the other two lures that we have compared. For casting, I went to the football field, set up the goal line, and casted each bait 10 times. I put my feet on the line and never moved them. I casted 5 underhand and 5 overhand. I then would walk down to where the lure landed, recorded the yards, and converted the measurement to feet. I then took the average of the 10 casts of each lure to compare. I casted each lure on a 7 foot 2 inch Denali covert worm and jig rod and the line that I used was 14 pound Sunline FC Sniper fluorocarbon. The dark sleeper had the farthest throw at 141 feet and the farthest average at 122 feet. The way this bait is designed with the weight system in the head made it really easy to throw this lure. I was more consistent on casting this underhand but had the farthest throw by throwing it overhand. The epic swim bait head spark shad combo came in second with the farthest throw at 138 feet and had an average of 120 feet. Once again I was more consistent by throwing this bait underhand. The sleeper gill came in last with a distance at 135 feet for its farthest. 
but was really consistent as majority of the cast was in the 120 to 122 feet range. In this test, I did not try to throw it as hard or far as I could every time. I made nice easy casts for us to get a good comparison. I know if you go lighter line and longer rod, good chance you can get these baits to cast even farther. Also, I understand we do not need to go throw these baits 120 to 140 feet every time we go out, but I did these tests to be able to give you as much information that I can offer. This day that I casted, there was not any wind. From my experience with testing these lures at the lake, they casted efficiently in the wind and I was able to make accurate casts with them. Like I said earlier in the video, I was really excited about throwing this dark sleeper at one of my local lakes. I went to Lake Millwood, which if you do not know Lake Millwood, it's shallow, muddy, and it's not what your typical places you'd probably throw this bait. So I went way up the river and I fished shell beds and river drop-offs. And man, these fish acted like they have never seen it before. Probably because they hadn't. I ended up catching nine fish on the day. My best five uh, was around 13 to 14 pounds. And my first fish I caught was right over three pounds. I did all of this y'all in the first two hours of the morning and it was a blast. I caught majority of my fish hopping it, but I did catch some fish dragging it as well. Thank you for watching today's video. We hope you're enjoying the underwater base testing as we're going to continue this series on the channel. If you would not mind, leave us a comment on what you thought of today's video and if you have any other suggestions for future videos. After the last underwater bait test, me and Johnny wrote down all the suggestions and me and him have came together and we have us a list right now of future videos for y'all with the underwater bait testing. If you would not mind, please like and subscribe as it will help us with the YouTube algorithm so we at Fish The Moment can continue to bring y'all free content. Once again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.